Hello and welcome to the much anticipated, the much listened to, a lot of people waiting for this episode of the Western Bulldogs podcast, Barclay Street, episode 21, if you can believe that, Marcus, 21. And we wouldn't be here, mate, as always, without our good friends at Mercedes-Benz Vans, so we, we say good day to Mercedes-Benz Vans, give them a bit of a shout out, good people there, good cars, good vans, good utes. Mm. Wow. Are you, how are you, mate? Is it, are you angling? I love how you turn this into a, <laughs> into a thank you, but also I can, I can do this if there's any... The go, hey, what's hey. the going rate? So, hey. you just... <laughs> Last week, we were a bit prickly with one another. <laughs> the walls are closing in a little bit, so we had, we had a bit of a dust-up last week. And now we're... The virtual, the virtual walls. <laughs> the virtual walls. <laughs> Came in. So let's let's start peaceful. Let's see if we can just keep yes. friendly. We've got serious okay. footy. We've got serious footy on the horizon, mate. So we need to we need to circle the wagons. Okay. Um, yep. How are you, mate? Uh, good win on the weekend. Good. Uh, it was a clinical win. You know, the first half was was pretty special. Just put the put the sort of situation to sleep. And the last the last second half was a bit sketchy. But you did what you had to mm. do in the first half. You must have been happy. Yeah, good win. Clearly, um, I think that sort of presents as you you know go through the season at different points as maybe a, a danger game in terms of you know going as probably favourites should win um, from an outside perspective. And obviously internally, you're confident about your form and and whatnot. But it's good that we're able to obviously you know play a. a really good brand of football in the first half and albeit yeah that was probably if anything a frustrating thing or an annoyance of setting it up in the in the first half and not quite being able to follow through with it in the second which we probably just need to be better at as a group to be able to really sort of finish those games you know consistently strongly so despite that it was it was it was nice to sort of um you know get a a really good grip on the game in the first half um, and obviously then sort of finish. We still probably should have um, finished a bit better in that last quarter, um, but good win and obviously looking forward to, to the Frio game this weekend. So there were plenty of positives to come out of the game and you know we know the season is, is still alive and the fact that we're sitting here doing a podcast means that you know we'll probably win this week because... Loyal listeners will uh, know mm. the pattern that has emerged, that it's uh, we pod, we win. So that's the positives. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the, the sad news from the weekend was, was our old mate Toby McLean and, and mm. the, the knee injury. Can you give us a, um, an update on, on how Toby's tracking and, and just how it's affected the group and, and people around the place? Yeah, I think um, an injury, an injury like that, obviously, yeah, it does affect the group significantly. Um, not just for the the playing perspective, but clearly inside the hub, we spent a lot of time together, and as we do, sort of normally outside the hub. But uh, you know, he's one of our good mates, um, Toby, and you know, to understand, everyone understands the uh, the process of of, you know, an ACL injury and then what follows. You've obviously experienced it yourself and then know the challenges that come with rehabbing and, and obviously staring down the barrel of a, a longer rehab because it's not a, a swift um, return by any means and he's a mental, a bit of a mental grind. But the initial shock is always that the hardest part to probably face and deal with and trying to get your head around, um, you know, Toby trying to get his head around, you know, what the next, you know, 12 months looks like for him is, is where, uh, yeah, you do really feel, feel for him. And, and we're lucky. We've got great support systems and, and networks to, to help Toby and obviously for him to lean on us at, at different points, but it was pretty, it was pretty swift, mate. Um, so it was virtually within the, within the next day, he basically had a scan, which confirmed, confirmed the injury. And he was essentially almost back home the, the, the following day. Um, and, and has actually been in for surgery already. Um, and from, all understanding it went really well, which is which is great. Um, but it's been a pretty swift swift movement to have him pretty much yeah, operated on and 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 rehabbing now. Jeez, that's pretty. Um, yeah, I mean the word you describe there is swift. That's um, that's a lot going on, isn't it, in your life mm. for Toby? Mm. You know, the, yep. the the injury itself and then scan you mm. whisked away home to then operation back home there. It's, yeah. It's, um, it is just another layer of um, what's been a you know what's been a, a yeah. A tough, he's a resilient. He's a resilient bloke, um, Toby. So 
you know he's he's had different shoulder you know troubles at different times and always managed yeah. to, to deal with his those challenges really well which which holds him in, in really good stead but clearly you know a knee a knee is, is pretty significant but um he'll he'll be okay I, i've got a feeling he'll bounce pretty well he's a he's a um you know happy go lucky type of guy um uh, which is which is good um and yeah he'll you know be be well supported in those in that sort of challenge yeah, well, on behalf of all the Bulldog supporters, because I know Toby will be listening to the Barclay Street podcast. I know mm. all the players. I know all the players tune in, yeah. listen to it. Often on the way to the game, I'm told they yeah get phones in even when they're doing their warm up. But uh, if you're listening, Toby, yeah, from everyone associated with the Bulldogs, the broader family, we wish you all the best, mate. We're um we're in your corner as always, so we're thinking of you. Um, award season will be uh, not too far away, Bont. I know we've got a big game coming up against the. The plucky Fremantle Dockers on uh, on Sunday, um, and we're going to talk to a guest shortly who who might feature in one of those award ceremonies as well. But Caleb Daniel, um, he's had some sort of a season, Caleb, hasn't he? Do you yeah. sort of you sort of sit back in amazement, or are you it's just kind of expected now? He's he's one of the premier halfback flankers in the competition. Yeah, he is. And he's he's not, I guess, your traditional halfback flanker in terms of your run and gun and sort of can carry the ball, you know, twenty and then kick it that's long. Not, like he's very nice of you to say. It's nice of you to say. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I laid that one up, didn't I? I actually should have put the brakes on. No, fair, fair call. <laughs> he is, but he's more um I think you've I think you've termed it in the past like surgical, like a surgeon with his ability to, mm. you know, cut through opposition teams and really set us up. I think it's a really great way to describe his, you know, he's an incredible talent with his ability to change his mind as the ball is is in his mm. hand and almost moving towards his foot. His ability to swiftly you know move the ball in one direction or another or you know change his hips or his feet to open up opposition you know yeah. defenses is, is sensational and um i probably you know haven't played with a player who has that oh that ability on both sides of his body like oh well that's and a, that's <laughs> that's oh, a low did play. you think <laughs> see in, in in saying that Come i should on, he <laughs> it's it, really no no you were pretty you're good real you're pretty friend, good your real friend stab you from the front we've talked about this <laughs> you were pretty this good I, I i should say you were pretty good in your day uh, i didn't see i don't know if i saw you you know you're very <laughs> uh, talk about taking the air out of one it's You're different players you don't get it don't don't make this about you bob all right well, don't make this about you yeah. The listeners want to hear about <laughs> Caleb, all right? Oh, yeah. that's a thought. That's a haven't okay. thought about. Okay, yeah, let's talk about let's talk about the current players again. <laughs> <laughs> all right, back to Caleb. So yeah, anyway, back to Caleb. Sorry, we digress. You're a sensational player, mate. You're a sensational, but it's not about you. Um, in terms of that that ability to just quickly bang bang like and 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 change yeah change his change his mind or whether it's part of his thinking already but he's deceiving everyone else about what what he wants mm. um and we've got incredible sort of faith and confidence now in him when the ball is in his hand it's sort of like not you know get it to him you know don't kick it backwards to, to find him almost but you use him when he's in space because he's yeah. just so creative um so a lot of the time if he's in the area you just want to hand in the ball because you know something creative is going to happen um yeah. So, he, yeah, oh, I mean, he's getting the credit this year for his, you know, football. He's probably been producing for a number of years. Um, yeah. But having a really strong, a really significant impact on why we're going so well at the minute as a team. Has the attention he's been getting and the praise, has that been difficult for some of the other um, bigger names and longer names in the Bulldogs? In terms you know, of? Midfield? Well, just like the attention that he gets because of how good he's going. And, yeah. Well, I just, you know, that, you know, all players have got egos. I'm just curious whether, you know, just... Are you going to talk specifically taken... here or are you happy? Well, I thought, well, aren't we honest here? Am are, I, am are, I you, are, you, are, you, are you flat? Are you flat that it's all about Caleb and the, the big <laughs> <laughs> the big lumbering number four just in the shadows, just ever so slightly, just for a little bit? 
Has that been? Hey, it's, it's great because you know when the run with comes or the tag comes, they <laughs> better be really in the take it. Uh, That's all I've had is like, oh, uh, when the tag comes, oh, we might have to go with Daniel here. It's like you know what Bont and Pelly thinks. Let's. Go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you've always been very evasive. You're too good for me. Too good for me. <laughs> uh, have you been? Have you had a look forward to Fremantle yet, or is it still still a few days away? Yeah. yeah. Not, not yet. I'll, most players, you know, whether they're interested, as put interested or, or, you know, not so interested, might have had a look at their game last week. And even just to see the scoreline, they had a pretty a pretty dominant game against North Melbourne, which uh, they've got they've got a really, you know, young and, and talented and um, I think, yeah, passionate sort of group who, who are keen to, obviously with a new coach in their first year or, you know, maybe from an individual's but perspective get their careers going or, or continue to develop and grow um, so I think we're, we're ready we know what they're capable of and have to be really you know prepared for, for them coming at us pretty hard with with a bit to prove so uh, haven't in terms of um, preview or um, you know sat down and had a look at what the game might look like just yet that'll happen tomorrow um, but I think we're all pretty aware that it's obviously a big game for us but but they'll be ready to play how does it work so on the on the Saturday there's at least one game I mean there's plenty of games over the weekend that will shape the eight mm. um, will, will players watch the game do you do you just wait on other people to tell you the results do you sort of mm. Are there varying degrees of fanaticism around ladder movement They're and probably, what that means and the scenarios, or, do you, or is it just would like, be. we just have to win? W- worry about yeah, the rest. that's that's my mentality, and that'll be my you know my communication to the group and, and players in passing. But because I think the, it's pretty clear that if we win, we we yeah we should yeah. be in. So that's if that's clear, that makes it pretty simple for, for me um, that we just want to get ourselves in there and need to win to do that. And then, you know, anything else that, that happens that shapes that, well, we can't sort of control. So I think everyone's acutely aware of, of what the state of play is. But as long as we're focused on the fact that, that winning gets us in, then, then that'll that'll be it for us, I reckon. So, um, but you're right, there would be varying degrees. Like there's, you know, a lot of people who are interested or footy interested and are probably have had a look and, and done your old ladder predictor or whatever the case may be. <laughs> um, but I, I like that it's pretty simple. Like it, we're, we're fortunate that we're not dependent on too many other things. If we win and focused on playing our best football, that, that'll, yeah, that'll get us there. I think it's a pretty good way to go. Keep it nice and simple. Get after the mm. Dockers, get the four points and, and lock in that final spot. Hey, Marcus, let's have a small break. And when we come back, let's talk to the rejuvenated man the 150 gamer son of a gun Mitch Wallace (laughs) Uh, welcome back everyone to uh, Barkley Street the Western Bulldogs podcast that's Marcus Bontempelli laughing in the background being very unprofessional I've tried to show him the ropes about what showbiz is all about but we we don't want to waste too much time because our next guest is well he's a a son of a gun, a Western Bulldog favourite. He's got a milestone this week. He's had the season of his life so far. Uh, Mitch Wallace, welcome to the Bulldogs podcast, Barkley Street. Thank you very much, Bob. It's great to see you. I haven't seen you in a long time. I know. Uh, it's been a while. You are well? Uh, yeah, I'm well, mate. Uh, I'm actually enjoying pub life. Uh, obviously got a young family now and Emily and Charlotte are going really well and we're, we're having a lot of positive experiences up here. So uh, quite happy at the moment. So can we start with the fatherhood? Charlotte's how old now? So she's coming up in 13 weeks. So she's Thir- more of a, of a Queenslander than a Victorian because she's only been oh, Victorian. Oh, wow. We flew oh. up at day 13. So, yep. um, Has she started had putting... Her, had her first 4X. Yeah, she hasn't started putting A on the end of every sentence, has she? Uh, not yet. Uh, I, I don't know, again, <laughs> don't know, a big part of love new stuff, but she's going to be, yeah. uh, she's definitely going to be a Melbourneian. Yeah, okay, that's good. Just keep an eye on. We we just got to be careful. Mm. We don't hear any pretty pretty good. Her though, first eh? word. Yeah. If her first word is a, then we're all in strife. So so from my experience, Mitchy, thirteen Charlotte's thirteen weeks. So you guys are there's no sleep overnight. Um, there's a bit of teething happening. You're in sort of parental hell. Is that 
tell me that's uh, what's going on. Uh, don't tell me. <laughs> don't tell me she's sleeping. Uh, there's a few elements that are going our way. She's a sleeper. Uh, oh, again, oh, I'm not taking God, for granted. No. Again, I've heard so many horror stories. That's not. And fair. even Emily's part of a mum's group. And, you know, it's all about sleep. And Emily just sits back in the corner because we are quite lucky. Charlotte goes down at 8 o'clock most nights and then and wakes up at about 6. So we've, uh, we've got it lucky from that I point can, of view. I can hear a lot of young parents listening to this podcast now just throw their iPods yeah. <laughs> into a wall. All oh, right, well... More power. Again, there's two challenges though, Bobby. She doesn't she doesn't sleep in the afternoon and she has a witching hour from or witching hours from about yeah. four till six. So that's a real challenge um, that, that we're facing. But she's been an absolute delight. Obviously loving fatherhood um, and that everything that comes with it. And Emily's really, you know, she's a she's been an absolute trooper, doing a lot of things by herself. Um, she's very close with Rob and Katie, her parents. Yeah. Unfortunately can't be a part of, of many of the, the young milestones that Charlotte's going through yeah. and achieving at the moment. So there's some there's some sadness in it, but um, you know, within our little bubble, our four walls, uh, there's a lot of smiles and a lot of good times. Oh, that's good. That's good. How's it? What about the footy, mate? You're having a, um, you're having probably your best ever season, and it's not what we've sort of come to expect. But um, kicking goals, playing that role down there. Can Can I ask you a very direct question? Yep. And and I'm sort of showing my age here now, being a bit old fashioned. But when I watch the Bulldogs games, I think Mitch is our full forward. He plays full forward. Yeah. Is that yeah. How, how would you describe, or how does the, what's the modern uh, lingo for it? The, the modern lingo at the moment with the way that we're struck is I'm the medium forward. So I'm the middle guy because we've right. got Aaron and Josh yeah. as the full forward, centre half forward. But mm. when there was only one tall on the side, I was the deepest most of the time. So I was the full forward. <laughs> Which yeah. is quite quite strange, and um, I know, I've said it like I've really embraced it. I've loved playing forward. It is it is different. You've got to take your midfielder's hat off um, because you're not involved in the game for really large portions of the game. And I'm it's relying. It's not on much top. of a hat, mate. The midfielder hat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's got it's a bit of a dorky. Oh, wow. I got it. Hard a strings bit of a dorky. Oh. Yeah, oh, it, no. it is because you you got to swallow your pride, like. Again, you've, you're only getting, again, at the moment, it's about 10 or 11 involvements a game and you've got to make the most of them where, mm. you know, Marcus is lucky to have the ball 30 times a week. And well, often able... the ball just falls into your lap in the midfield, doesn't it? Yeah, it's, oh, it's easy. It was, it's easy. It's easy as a midfielder. Well, it's, but, almost, um, like, it's almost like a lot of those possessions are just like, yeah, they're, they're not as hard. I mean, they're quite easy to get. and yeah, even the no, that, just falls, Like you said, it falls in your lap and... Yeah. And free kick bonds for a Pally. bloke who averaged one tackle for their career, Bob. You talk a lot of smack. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, uh, now, just have a... <laughs> I don't want to hear it. I want to. I want to ask Mitch a question because it was it was a pretty big shift for you. Like even like you said to take the sort of hat off, but it wasn't wasn't just a hat. Like your your preparation around how you looked at football, how you played the game. Um, you know, it would be interesting for you to describe how it's maybe changed or how it's been similar. But to make that shift from a, you know, an inside midfielder, which you were since, I think you said during the week in an article, since you were a kid, virtually you play midfield from a young age, right through to obviously when you were drafted, a prolific midfielder, and then started your career and a fair chunk of it as a mid to now move forward. Um, you've spoken about it a bit, but what's that experience been like? And how did that process come about in terms of whether it was a chat with Bevo or what the case may be about how you made the move? Did you instigate the chat? Was it something you both came to together? Tell us a bit about that. Yeah, and, and to, to be totally honest, um, I love how Frank Bevo is. And at the end of the season last year, um, with how we finished the season off, um, obviously losing in the, in, the, in the final, but the last few rounds where I wasn't a part of, our midfield was, was really dominant. And, and to be totally honest, I had a conversation with Bevo at the end of the year saying, look, you're, you're not in that mix anymore um, at this point in time. And he said, look, I know you're determined. You, you can fight your way back in there. But um, I had to, again, explore different ways where I could, you know, be in the 22, to be, to be frank. So, um, you know, four was always an option. And I, I sort of proved throughout my career at little stints that I could have a little impact there. But it wasn't until a, a practice match in the preseason where I, um, I played forward for the whole game and did okay, uh, kicked a couple of goals. And then we had a chat and he said, well, we want to play you as a forward. And again, I, I, was just, I just wanted to play and get back out there. 
So I um I said, yep, I'm willing and, and able. Um, and then, yeah, from there, the first probably four or five rounds, I was just chasing, chasing ass a bit because, again, it's so... It's so different, um, right. you know, spending so much time down there. But uh, when I, you know, got to talk to Ash a lot more and watch film, we didn't get to, we don't get to train much um, up in the hub because we're playing so often. But to, to watch film and study the little intricacies, and, and I found that just through being having the midfielder sort of physique in terms of being fit and, and being on all the time, I found I found that during games I can constantly make decisions mm. um, and then make the most of the opportunity. So. Uh, embrace that, but then got some reward. And I think, you know, you, you can train so so much and, and convince yourself that you are a forward. But if you don't you know, get the reward on the scoreboard or have influential plays, um, you don't truly believe it. So once I, I started to, to have an impact and, and again, I, you like getting pats on the back, but I was getting mentioned a fair bit more um, for the influence. Um, that, again, builds up your confidence and belief that you, that you can have a little play there. So that just growing. And again, I've got the foundation of, of the Ford craft, but I still think there's so much upside and so much to learn and, and to get better going forward. Do you feel like um, you're in that sweet spot, Mitch, of, because what I've noticed is you've got this beautiful balance at the moment of when to lead up at the at the ball carrier, but also when to hold your ground because you're often getting a mismatch. There's not a, there's not an obvious matchup for you because you, you know, you're so strong in the one-on-one, but you're not, you're not up against key defenders because Naughty and and Josh have got the the big bears. Is that yeah. is that giving you a bit of confidence? It, it is, and again, it's it's about reading the pressure on the ball um, and, and who's got the ball in hand. Obviously, we've got different players who can kick different lengths and like the hit up or like the, the kick over the back. So, again, that's all learnings and, and knowing your teammates. Mm. Um, but I yeah. do love again playing with the bigger boys because I do often get that mismatch. Um, but I think. Even going forward and over the summer, I want to be able to, you know, shift into different gears, whether that's get the ball up a little bit higher or be that person that's deeper. And that's just, again, the evolution of the role. But, um, again, I, I love leading, but I haven't got the leading bit down pat yet. I think that the one on one is something that I've, I've uh, been, you know, training over a number of years. But the actual leading patterns and when to lead is something that I've got a lot of room for growth especially because, the, you know, the way that we play is normally outnumbered down there. So the, the leading is important, but... Um, more often than not, if you lead too hard or too too far, you get out of position yeah. and you just get drops wrong. off. So, um, and you get again, tired too. The bus stop get lead. Too tired. Just the bus stop lead. Just well, put it up to me, fellas. It is, Mike, and I've only spent patches forward. It is a largely different game from a physical perspective. Like, Bob, you've played a, a fair bit there, obviously Thanks. at the other end of the ground too. Um, but Thank from you. a midfield, like expenditure like physical perspective it's very different it's a lot more high intensity stop sort of start you've got to be used to those using those gears a lot more whereas it feels like midfield you're obviously covering probably more territory but it's at probably slower speeds um and you need to use yeah, your speed slow. at different Often points and but you've had to probably you know probably you've always had a great tank but adding that ability too is to learn probably how to play the position from a, a speed perspective has that changed too yeah no, definitely and i haven't trained that yet either so i think i've had to sort of make that up on the run so that's what yeah. excites me about going to this summer well you, you change yeah. the condition of your body a little bit more um yep. but I, I must admit that the high intensity intensity bursts aren't as taxing i feel as what yep. what, what i used to do and what you do is, is the bash and crash of it, oh, but okay. no, no, well, that's that's great to hear. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Sorry, Bobby, I'm, I'm pumping up mm. on style there, but yeah. um, again, I, I'm it's looking arguable. forward to, to, to changing that. <laughs> I'm looking forward to training it and just seeing, you know, yeah. that yes, yeah. how I can again impact the game because I've never really been known for my speed. Uh, but if, if I could put that in the you know, in the skyrocket and then be able to call upon mm. that at different times, we'll, we'll see if that can benefit me. Speed of mind, yeah. speed of mind. Hey, uh, Mitch, I'm curious because you have, you know, you spend a lot of time as an as an inside midfielder, a lot much like Marcus is, and now now you're a forward. Um, often midfielders talk about, you know, being sat on and tagged, and yet forwards just have an opponent. Have you got a view on whether? Um... Yeah, that's. Are we allowed to swear on this podcast? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, All right. This, uh, is, that's, this is a very edgy podcast. <laughs> <laughs> nah, we, we get tagged. You get tagged as a forward. That I, I just don't know what that. Uh, that's that's a misconception. Um, yeah. 
Oh, do, but you, like all, hide, like all tags, defenders, you stand, they run off you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can just get easy kicks out the back. And you get in Jeez. trouble for that. You're all pretty you get, much you get, plugger. Well, I started. No, I've, you get played on. And I've never been paid as much attention as a forward as I've just been for my whole career. So uh, yeah, on with you, Bob. That it's is tag, well. tag. Yeah. That is really interesting. Yeah, so when, when Bont cries poor me every week, we're getting someone <laughs> started on him. I think I've got a few on the bank to say poor me too, mate. Oh, oh gee. Okay. Just for, oh, for everyone listening out there. I might kick a few left, a bit left of you <laughs> on Sunday. Just, just for everyone that listening one, out Chet. there. <laughs> the, bo- the body language of the skipper right now, very defensive. <laughs> Cannot wait for this podcast to be over the skipper. Hey, uh, Mitch, um, <laughs> lots of good stuff happening for you this year. Um, 150 games. Has that kind of crept up on you? It's a, it's a, it's a huge milestone, particularly you know with the, the injuries that you know you've endured, and you know. But it's been a long, it's been a long road for you. Yeah, it has. And again, I'll, I'll reflect uh, upon it at season, season's end, and, and be really proud because it is a lot of games and it's a lot of years. And like you said, the journey's been full of ups and downs. But to, to make it this far and, and still be happy and enjoy my football is, is a really, you know, it's a really good thing and a really good achievement. But um, I think the other exciting thing is, is the game that it's, you know, this game is a do or die for us uh, on the weekend. It's like elimination final. So, you know, the energy around the club at the moment is great. And to be able to sort of coincide a, a milestone game with that energy is, is something that I, I'm not taking for granted either. Um, but mm. there's so many people that have, that have helped me along my way uh, to get to this point. But you know, I'm really firmly focused on on playing finals this year and and winning a final and and really having that belief that we've got what it takes to to go a long way. Mm. Some of us, are, you know, we're all lucky to sort of, I guess, get get drafted and end up at a, at a football club. But but some are lucky enough to, you know, I guess, be father sons and have a connection with, you know, a football club even before, I guess, your, your journey starts there from your playing perspective. Talk to us a bit about what it was like, obviously, probably having a fair bit to do with the club, but then come in and start playing for the club that you, your old man played for. Yeah, and oh yeah, I've mentioned before that this that, that whole experience and journey was was made even better experiencing it with Tom, with Libba. Mm, um, mm. There was there were some occasions, you know, when we were 14 that Scotty West took us down to training and, and we got to run water. We even got to mm. join in a couple of drills. Bob, I'm not sure if you, if you remember us, us doing that. But some of those experiences that, you know, no one will ever get to experience again are something that I hold really dear. Um, and and mm. some of the relationships that uh, we formed, that Tom and I formed with some players before we were even there, um, just made our, our transition and, you know, our love for the club even stronger before we were even there. Um, and then I still remember our, our draft night, we were on our hurt camp, so I, uh, I didn't get to hear... <laughs> My name, name getting called out, which is, you know, a fascinating initiation into, into the AFL world. But it is pretty special, mate. And, and talking to dad and, and past players of, of, of yesteryear, oh, I love hearing about what the club and how it was and how it was run and then experiencing what it's, you know, transformed into today. So uh, I do pinch myself because um, it is a bit of a storybook to, to think that, you know, I love the club so much. I love footy and then you end up playing um, in a jumper that I wore when I was younger. I wore number three, Chris Grant. He was, he was one of my, my um, favourites and one of my idols. So to wear that number um, playing for, for so many years is, is a bit of a storybook. But again, there's a few chapters left to play out, mate. And uh, uh, I hope Absolutely. that you know, we, have some, we share some success and, and really write ourselves into the history books. It's really well put, Mitch. Am I right? Is Emily your wife? She was a Bulldog supporter as well, wasn't she? <laughs> she was Bobby, and uh, I've got a couple of photos. Who was her favourite uh, player? Uh, I don't know. He's, he was a bit of a hack. Um, yeah. <laughs> to answer oh, the question, I yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Murphy. There's a couple of gorgeous photos of you both <laughs> back in the 1990s, mate. <laughs> when you, when you, uh, well, awesome, Mike. Mate, how, how do you reckon I, like, how do you reckon I snagged her? <laughs> 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 I got a little opening. Uh, mate, yeah. it's a beautiful thing. Um, mate, we've loved watching you play this year. We've loved watching you play your whole career, but it has been really nice this year to see you go down and add this string to your bow and um, play you know, a crucial role. And I, I know I speak on behalf of lots of Bulldog supporters that... There was a patch there if, 
where you you know hit some real form and and if you hadn't have found that form we, we're probably not here on the on the verge of a of a final series so um yep. thank you for this year but also for the for the um for the career you've had at the bulldogs um it's very special as marcus mentioned to have the lineage of father sons still representing the footy club and of course the number three we know how special that number is mm. uh, for the footy club um, to both of you good luck this weekend um, it's a huge game um, there's just a good feeling you guys have built some real momentum and hopefully you can keep it going because um, you know you two know better than better than anyone that if you're in it, you're a chance, and who knows what can happen after that. So um, from all the Bulldog supporters, good luck. Um, we're right in your corner, and uh, we'll ride every bump with you. Good luck. Thanks, Bobby. Cheers. Thanks, Thanks Bobby. for the good Take care. Bye.